female sexual anatomy is mostly presented only in terms of pregnancy and reproduction, even though pregnancy and reproduction are only fractions of what drives female sexuality. True discussions of female sexual anatomy must include the concept of pleasure, the greatest part of what drives female sexuality. A simple thought experiment will demonstrate just how great this pleasure is. Ask any adult female to calculate the number of times she has had and will have sex over her lifetime. Then ask her to divide this number into two categories. The number of times she had and will have sex for reproductive purposes, and the number of times mm. she had and will have sex for purposes of pleasure. Lastly, ask her which category's number is greater. Way, way, way greater. <sighs> Thus, Today's video explores female sexual anatomy in terms of its capacities for pleasure and to a lesser extent, reproduction. Most people, including females themselves, find female sexual anatomy confusing or mysterious. For example, a 2019 study found only 45% of females correctly labeled the urethra on an anatomically correct drawing, and only 55% and 57% of females correctly labeled the vagina and labia, respectively, on the same drawing. Males performed even worse, with percentages of 39%, 41% and 48% respectively. And a 2017 study found only 5% of females and males able to define vulva. This lack of knowledge about female sexual anatomy is likely because historically, culturally, and stereotypically speaking, females are expected to be sexually modest and secretive regarding their bodies. Whatever the cause, let this video remove any shrouds of confusion or mystery about female sexual anatomy. The most visible structure of female sexual anatomy is the vulva. The vulva's primary functions are pleasure and protection. The vulva is composed of the labia majora, which are the large lips enclosing and protecting the female's internal sex organs. Of interest to note, when it comes to females who masturbate, the most touched areas of the body to initiate orgasm is the clitoris, closely followed by the labia majora and the labia minora. The labia minora are the small lips surrounding and defining the openings of the vagina and urethra. The vulva is also composed of the minor and major vestibular glands. The minor vestibular glands also called Skene's glands, are on the wall of the vagina. When stimulated through touch, Skene's glands are associated with female ejaculation and vaginally induced orgasms. The major vestibular glands, also called Bartholin's glands, are located just to the left and right of the vagina and produce lubrication to aid in vaginal sexual intercourse. Most females at some time in their lives, and especially those who are postmenopausal, report inadequate lubrication, which in turn leads to discomfort or pain during vaginal sexual intercourse. Extending foreplay and using commercial water, silicone, mm -hmm. or oil-based personal lubricants are simple solutions to this common problem. The clitoris and the vagina are considered part of the vulva as well as internal sex organs. They are the most talked about organs relative to their capacities for female pleasure. Most of the clitoris, with an average overall excited length of about four to six inches and composed of as many as 18 independent anatomical parts, is considered an internal sex organ unable to be seen from outside the body. The parts of the clitoris considered part of the vulva and thereby able to be seen outside of the body 
are the glands and prepuce. The glands and prepuce are located above the urethra and join the labia minora at its pinnacle. As a whole, the clitoris is highly sensitive, composed of thousands of sensory nerve endings, and is associated with initiating orgasms. 90% of females can orgasm by clitoral stimulation alone. The clitoris's sole anatomical purpose is to bring pleasure to the female. No other female organs or any male organs have such a singular purpose. The vagina, also called the birth canal, is a muscular canal that spans from the cervix to the introitus. It has an average overall excited length of about four and a half inches and has two parts. The two parts of the vagina include its inner two thirds, called the posterior wall, which is formed during the first trimester of pregnancy, and its outer one third, called the anterior wall, which is formed during the second trimester of pregnancy. Having more sensory nerve endings, the anterior wall of the vagina is more sensitive than the posterior wall of the vagina, but dramatically less sensitive than the clitoris. Only between 10 and 30% of females achieve orgasms by vaginal stimulation alone, and less than 20% of females who masturbate do so with vaginal penetration. At each end of the vagina are the cervix, the lower portion of the uterus, and the introitus, the vaginal opening to the outside of the body, considered a part of the vulva. The vagina acts as a transport mechanism for sperm cells coming in and menstrual fluid and babies going out. On a scale from 0 to 14, with 0 equaling highly acidic, 7 equaling neutral, and 14 equaling highly basic, a healthy vagina has a pH level of about 4. When this pH level changes, often due to normal circumstances like menstruation, using tampons or sexual intercourse, it facilitates the production of microorganisms that often cause vaginal odor and pain. Oh, no. This potential problem can be solved with over-the-counter vaginal gels or oral probiotics to maintain normal vaginal pH levels. But most gynecologists recommend allowing the vagina's own mechanisms to bring its pH level back to four. Before ending our discussions about the vagina, let me alleviate two myths about it. The first myth concerns the hymen. The hymen, considered part of the vulva, is a thin, fleshy tissue, sometimes surrounding and sometimes partially covering the introitus of the vagina. And as far as function is concerned, the hymen has no known psychological or biological purpose. It is not associated with pleasure, nor is it associated with reproduction. However, many people believe an intact hymen is a measure of virginity. This belief is a myth. In fact, for at least five reasons, it is impossible to reliably determine a female's virginity based upon examining her hymen. Reason number one, the hymen is stretchy and flexible. Therefore, it does not necessarily tear or even change in size, shape, or form with penile penetration. Reason number two, the hymen's size, shape, and form differ from one female to the next. Therefore, there is no standard virgin hymen or non-virgin hymen. Reason number three, the hymen's size, shape, and form naturally change with age and development, having nothing to do with sexual intercourse. Reason number four, the hymen's size, shape, and form change from washing, walking, athletics, self-exploration, tampons, and gynecological exams, having nothing to do with sexual intercourse. And reason number five, not all females are born with a hymen. 
Now, there is a scientifically proven method to determine whether a female has had vaginal intercourse. It's called Ask Her. The second myth about the vagina involves bigger being better. Although it's popular to believe most females preferring a larger than average size penis when engaging in vaginal intercourse, this belief is false. The falsity of this belief makes anatomical sense. Vaginal intercourse with a larger than average size penis likely would have the penis stimulating the cervix. Although the cervix may be sensorily sensitive and cervically induced orgasms are described in popular media, there is no empirical evidence for cervically induced orgasms general existence and most females do not find deep pressure on the cervix sexually stimulating. Sometimes considered as being part of the vulva, the anus is the opening at the end of the rectum through which solid waste matter leaves the body. It is also a highly pleasurable sex organ for the female. In fact, a 2015 study reported when comparing females engaged in mutual masturbation, anal sexual intercourse, oral sexual intercourse, or vaginal sexual intercourse, those engaged in anal sexual intercourse were most likely to report having an orgasm. With its dense sensory nerve innervation shared with the muscles involved in orgasm, few other organs besides the clitoris are as anatomically equipped to promote orgasm intensity. Unlike the vagina's Bartholin's glands, the anus has no self-lubricating glands to aid in anal sexual intercourse. Thus, beyond analingus, lubricants are going to be necessary in order for pleasure to come from anal sexual intercourse. And the best lubricants to use are store-bought lubricants because natural lubricants like saliva are associated with promoting sexually transmitted infections. The primary functions of the female's internal organs that compose her sexual anatomy are producing hormones and storing and transporting and keeping ovum cells healthy. These organs include the uterus, also called the womb, is where human development occurs until birth. The ovaries are glands that house the ova, also referred to as eggs, of which the female has about 2 million at birth and eventually none at menopause. Additionally, the ovaries produce the hormones progesterone, estrogen, and small amounts of testosterone. Fertilization is most likely to occur within the fallopian tubes. These tubes allow for ovulation, which is when ova travel from the ovaries to the uterus. Because of peak rising testosterone levels, ovulation tends to increase a female's sex drive. Ovulation often varies in when it occurs from one cycle to the next. This normal variability of ovulation occurrence may be caused by the percentage of body fat a female has, levels of stress, and other females living in proximity. If fertilization does not occur during ovulation, menstruation begins. Menstruation, also known as a period, is the discharging of ova along with the lining of the uterus through the vagina, usually taking several days to complete. At first glance, or touch for that matter, it seems the clitoris is the most likely part of the female's sexual anatomy to bring her pleasure. However, the clitoris pales in comparison to the female's central nervous system's capacity for pleasure. Extensive regions of the brain and brainstem are activated when the female is experiencing pleasure and orgasm, including the insula, temporal cortex, somatosensory cortex, limbic system, nucleus accumbens, basal ganglia, superior parietal cortex, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and cerebellum. Neuroimaging shows these regions of the brain are active when females have spontaneous orgasms caused by thoughts, feelings, fantasies, and involving no direct stimulation of the skin 
and these same regions are active when females' erogenous zones are stimulated. As I've mentioned, the clitoris, labia majora, labia minora, anus, and vagina are considered typical erogenous zones, bringing pleasure and orgasm. Additionally, a female's breasts, nipples, lips, neck, ears, buttocks, inner thighs, lower abdomen, pubis, scalp, feet, wrists, and behind her knees have been experimentally found to bring sexual pleasure. And a 2016 study found beyond the clitoris, labia majora, labia minora, anus, and vagina, 12% of females can achieve orgasm by physically stimulating one of the following erogenous zones. Breasts, nipples, lips, neck, ears, buttocks, inner thighs, lower abdomen, or pubis. Thus, the skin is not only the female's biggest organ, but also the female's biggest sex organ. Erogenous zones are sensitive areas of the skin. Females typically interpret erogenous zones as being ticklish, painful, or sexually pleasing. Erogenous zones are sexually pleasing because they increase levels of oxytocin and dopamine. Oxytocin is the so-called love hormone. It causes feelings of empathy, trust, love, and sensuality. Oxytocin also stimulates the ejection of milk into the ducts of the female's breasts. And during the birthing process, it increases contraction of the female's uterus. Dopamine is a so-called feel-good neurotransmitter. It causes feelings of pleasure and satisfaction. Dopamine also boosts attention, motivation, and mood. And because it is a significant part of the brain's reward system, dopamine is associated with learning, memory, and emotions. Let me end this video with three points of hope. I hope this video has removed at least some of the shrouds of confusion and mystery about female sexual anatomy. And I hope any knowledge gained from this video allows you to fight the inequitable social mores forcing females to be sexually modest and secretive regarding their bodies. Lastly, I hope this video is merely a starting point for your research and exploration mm. of your own sexual anatomy.